It's 4.30 in the morning on a remote mountaintop in the Chilean desert. Pink Floyd blares through Ian Shelton's headphones as he meticulously maneuvers a 10-inch telescope at Las Campanas Observatory. It's February 24, 1987, and Shelton, a telescope operator, is having a rough night. The observatory's sliding roof door isn't working when he arrives. After finally getting it open, he spends three hours painstakingly taking a picture of the Large Magellanic Cloud, a galaxy that orbits the Milky Way. Suddenly, a gust of wind slams the door closed, and everything goes black. Shelton takes the hint. Maybe I'll just call it a night. The things are about to look up. He takes the 8x10 photographic plate to the dark room and develops it. Checking the exposure, he immediately notices something odd. And there was this extra star that was brighter, effectively, than all the other ones. I figured, why didn't I use that one to line up the telescope? Because it wasn't there. It shouldn't be there. Shelton checks it against the previous night's plate. Nope, definitely not supposed to be there. He grabs his jacket, steps outside, and looks up. Sure enough, there it is, a bright point of light near the Tarantula Nebula. Uh, for me, I was just you know, quite surprised to the point that I had a bit of disbelief. So Shelton heads down the road to check with the guys at another telescope. He casually asks fellow astronomer Barry Medor. Well, what would you say about a fifth magnitude object in the LMC? Medor does the math in his head. And he says, no, nah, supernova. And then he looks at me, you know, does the double You're kidding. That's when telescope operator Oscar Duhalde chimes in. Yes, yes, I saw something there too. He was probably the first person to see it naked eye. Around 166,000 light years away, a hefty star had gone supernova. It ran out of fuel and its core collapsed, starting a shockwave. Ghostly particles called neutrinos helped push the shockwave to the star's surface and it exploded. The detonation spewed the star's chemical guts into space. Its end would turn up gaseous building blocks for stellar construction. Shelton and his colleagues were seeing this distant light show 166,000 years later, as close to real time as you could get. The last time someone had directly observed a supernova with the naked eye was in 1604. So the crew at Las Campanas has to get the word out, except no one knows the protocol for notifying the International Astronomical Union about a supernova. Shelton digs up an old article in Sky and Telescope magazine. It's a simple half page, or quarter page little thing, how to report a discovery. He tries calling the IAU office in Massachusetts. You know, it rang and rang and rang, but it just never picked up. So they go to plan B, send a telegram. They scribble a note and instructions on a piece of paper. The driver sets off for the closest town, La Serena, about 100 kilometers away, in search of a telex machine, the equivalent of email today. For the astronomy community, it was big, big news. And I guess everybody thought, well, now this is the big one. Shelton's supernova became known as 1987A. Its proximity to Earth meant it could be viewed with the naked eye from the Southern Hemisphere, a rare treat. Stars go supernova all the time in the universe. But 1987A confirmed a lot of things that astronomers had theorized about the death of stars. It also marked the first supernova where astronomers could pinpoint the identity of the progenitor star, Senduliac minus 69202. And it was the first time researchers detected neutrinos from a stellar explosion. It's been 30 years since Shelton captured 1987A's fiery blast. Some scientists are still learning things from the supernova and the remains it left behind. In the meantime, Shelton and others await their next opportunity to see a star explode. <laughs>